Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life. Oh, I almost said Bahati Love Notes, and that is because I just finished the latest reading. For those of you guys who are subscribed to those exclusive private readings, your video is up for you now. Everyone else, welcome back. Now, we were celebrating Memorial Day here in the United States. That's where we honor those who have protected and served our country past present and future especially those whose lives were sacrificed for that reason this week has been pushed back it is actually tuesday that it is that i'm filming this instead of monday like i normally do for that reason i'm going to do what i always do which is take a step back before i step forward before we even dive into that, we do have a sponsor for today's video. And before I dive into that, I want to tell you that some things to look out for in this week's video that I really want to draw your attention to that can be problematic, but don't necessarily need to be negative, especially if you know how to work with the planets, you can make them work for you, not against you. Mars. Mars, the planet of drive, fire, ambition, and war, is going to be directly conjunct Chiron, one of the most sensitive aspects in our entire astrology. Um, look to see what Chiron rules within your chart. Look to see where Chiron is currently transiting within your chart. That's where you're going to see, see the spot that is going to be more vulnerable to any type of action, good or bad, that Mars is going to be bringing to you this week. This is definitely a transit that you want to keep your eyes out for. You don't want to allow it to trigger you in the point that to the point that it pulls you back into that wounded state that you can't move past it or it can especially with transits lately that have been so fluctuating you don't want it to allow to make you think that this is going to be you know bad news bears that this is going to be the way of the world for you forever it's going to be temporary but it can be painful but also more importantly it can be transformative if you know exactly how to work with these energies so make sure that you're following through the entirety of this video another thing another transit that's really standing out to me this week that i really need you guys to pay attention to is the fact that mercury the planet of communication and how we process and analyze information is transiting through taurus the sign that loves stability loves predictability however as mercury is moving forward with the week it's going to be almost di well directly conjunct it's almost conjunct directly conjunct uranus now but later on in the week it's going to be directly conjunct which means the two energies of those planets are going to be in perfect alignment which will create surprise information surprise downloads surprise uh, letters text messages conversations things that we may not necessarily have seen coming again because uranus rules rules surprise and unexpected development so let's go ahead and put a pin in that in the meantime guys this is a wonderful time for us to stop to pause to grab some water grab some tea i'm currently focusing on my hydration so i have a cup of ice water here it is brutally hot in florida i don't know if it is where you guys are but oh my god i was just telling bahati love noters does it feel like it's getting hotter sooner to me it does i really want to hear if you guys can relate to that at all it's got to be global warming i know that it's not global warming isn't directly connected to heat it's more weather extremes also i've been watching the midwest here in the united states and the storms that have been erupting there and i've just been keeping you guys in my prayers lighting candles and praying for protection over every single one of you so do let me know if you're feeling the intensification of the weather patterns around you let me know down in the comments i myself am feeling it a little sooner rather than later but for today's video we're gonna be diving into astrology transits and not so much global However, now that I'm saying that with Uranus transiting through Taurus and Mercury about to be directly conjunct, um, Uranus in Taurus, Taurus rules actually our Earth, Mercury rules information, and Uranus, Uranus uh, is connected to surprise information. Don't be surprised if we hear some type of development or news when it comes to our Earth front, when it comes to our weather patterns, and when it comes to the future and predictions that they have for that. Hopefully it'll be good, hopefully it'll be positive and showcasing how hard I believe we all have been working to protecting our earth, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So like I said, let's go ahead and take a break. Let's hear a word from our sponsors. Let's fill our cups up with water and tea, and then let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, honeys, welcome back. Let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is for me, the most important. And that is Chiron. Chiron is considered an asteroid, a tiny planet. And it's very important to us astrologers because it embodies the energy of us that is 
very, very vulnerable. It rules the aspect within us that although maybe the rest of our lives can seem like it, they're falling together and fluid, this is an aspect in ourselves that if it is triggered by a planet transiting, whether distant or close, we are going to feel the effects almost immediately. This is what I like to call the Achilles tendon, like the part of ourselves that if we get hit in a spot, no matter how strong we may feel, we just come crashing, crumbling down. The point of us having this aspect within ourselves is it's really, in a, in a nutshell, it's meant to humble us, it's meant to give us a sense of compassion and connect us even further to humanity. No, none of us should feel superior to the other. No one should take advantage of anyone else and no one should use their pain as an excuse to hurt or to harm others. Chiron is teaching us, definitely now transiting through Aries, Aries rules the self. It's teaching us how to look within ourselves, to understand ourselves and how we even identify the labels that we give ourselves or the labels that society give us. Do they actually match who we are? How do we move past that? How do we grow beyond that? And who are we to our core? When we look at ourselves to our core, do we love and like who it is that we see? If not, this is going to help, this, this asteroid is going to strip us away, active action steps. It's going to strip us away from those things that hurt and hinder us, especially considering the fact that the very opposite of Aries, which Chiron is transiting, is Libra the sign that is always connected to harmonizing and compromising and relationships. These are the parts of ourselves that we can no longer compromise with others because it's it does more harm than good. This is when we can't put relationships before ourselves or this is when we have to look at why we are not able to be vulnerable with others. We feel or we give our power over to others. Those are things that we can work on healing. Anybody who has very strong Chiron placements within their astrological chart has an opportunity to heal the planet, but oftentimes their teachings and their healings come from them living through incredible, dramatic, drastic pain, painful circumstances that have brought them down and brought them back up and they have, they, they look at humanity in a totally different light, they look at themselves in a different light, especially if they're able to survive those types of transits. That's how serious a Chiron placement is within your personal chart as well as a Chiron transit. Now Mars rules our drive, our will, our action, it rules war, it rules how we chase after things, our masculine energy. Transiting through Aries, that right there, fire and very masculine, has already activated this sense of drive, and force and will in your life. Um, so definitely, if I can encourage you to look at Chiron's transit and Mars's transit, what does Mars, where does Mar Mars fall within your needle chart? If you can pull that up, I personally use astro.com. Also look to see what Aries, the house Aries rules. This is where you're gonna see the most of this transit unfolding um, in that area of your life. For example, if this is a natal chart, we are gonna be looking to see that this, this is happening in the eighth house, the eighth house of death, the eighth house of us relinquishing control, of releasing and letting go. This, if this was your transit, if this was your chart, I'm sorry, you might be dealing with um, issues of abandonment, issues of control, issues of power. You may have a fear of death or taxes maybe rearing, rearing their head up, things that you feel like you're, are, you owe other people and the fear that it brings out within you when this transit gets aspected. So it's, this is not something for those of you guys that kind of pivot in the, in the realms of anxiety, especially when it comes to astrology. This is not promising death on, any, on anybody. I know that that's something people get really scared of. They click out when we're dealing with more of the serious tones of life. It's more talking about personal, personal transformation and evolution within ourselves. One way that this transit, which I don't, I don't think I said this, the transit is gonna be exact May 29th at 1.08 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? And we're gonna be feeling this all this week. This is a, not a one and done transit, meaning it, just because it's happening on one day doesn't mean that we just feel it 
in that day and then it just dissipates and we're just able to move forward. This is something that we have to plan and prepare for the entirety of the week ahead. Someone here, especially masculine energy, may be feeling a little bit more vulnerable than they normally do. This could be something that they may be exhausted. They may have been putting their energy and chasing and pursuing a goal or something that is important to them to the point where they're the, they themselves feel very depleted. They f And for that reason, because they're exhausted, they may lose their ambition. They may lose their focus, their will, their drive. They may need a little extra coddling. I say masculine energy and I'm using the pronouns he, but I really don't want you guys to pin this energy onto a per outside person or an, a, a gender or how we identify. This is masculine energy as a whole. So this could easily represent energy that is found within yourself, even if you identify as a female or a woman. There is masculine and feminine energy found within every single one of us. So um, this can be really tough. Again, if you are chasing and pursuing, especially because Mars right now is transiting through Aries, this tends to ignite within every single one of us ambition and goals and drive. We could be interested in sports. We could be interested in study. We could be interested in revamping our home revitalizing ourselves working out it's like what we prioritize and what we begin to chase it's that goal that we start to chase however when chiron and when mars get closer and closer in this conjunction again this is going to be may 29th but we're going to be feeling it all this week there's a tendency to feel very vulnerable those same parts of ourselves that felt so capable and so ignited and so passionate and so brought to life may feel burnt out may feel in in incapable it may feel vulnerable may, may 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 feel weak one way to work with this energy is to nurture to self-nurture another way to work with this energy is to honor the fact that you may be experiencing feeling or someone else is experiencing burnout they simply cannot operate at the same high functioning level if that's how they view it at the same max capacity. This is like a person who's always operating at 100 and 110%. So when they naturally over time begin to dip slower, slower, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, and they're looking at themselves like, oh my God, I'm operating at 30% and the rest of the world may be looking at them like, they're operating at 30% when normally we had 100%, they're not giving enough. This is when you can feel really defeated. This is an important time to take a break, to retreat. For those of you guys who are taking vacations or time off, if you have time to take, this is a wonderful time to begin to seriously look at scheduling that vacation, scheduling that time to pivot. In that time, self-talk. Self-talk is gonna be huge and how you're physically using that time, meaning that instead of you continuing to expect yourself to pour out physical energy exerting into this project or taking your attention and focusing on, focusing on another project, meaning like let's say if you're working on building a new business and then you take some time off and then you start just killing yourself at the gym, that's even though it's not in the same area, it's still technically the same energy. We wanna go ahead and focus on restorative activities and in that process of restoring your physical energy, we want to speak life into your mental. The other thing that I really want you guys to keep an eye out for is Mars is very war, has the element of war. This is teaching us, especially as Mars is, has, has been transiting through Aries, that there are times and situations where we absolutely positively need to stick up for ourselves. Is there an area of your life where you need to voice your opinion, where you may need to confront something or express anger, especially when it comes to things that have hurt you, things that have betrayed you, things that have skipped over you, things that have been unfair? This is a valid time for you to speak up for yourselves or even to speak up and vouch for others. I also would not be surprised to see these trends showing up in the news where we're gonna start seeing people more angered and enraged because they feel like their voices are not being heard or you said you heard my voice and there was no action that came from this. We wanna see the action. And instead of there being this patient, calm, um, stern, energy that keeps continues to show up it starts to get more reactive more explosive if there's a chance if there was a full moon it would be a more heightened chance it would be far more explosive but there is a chance that we may see like pockets these tiny pockets of explosions around the world especially when it comes to cities people who are vouching and stick, sticking up for human rights um, fairness equality we may 
not just see people fighting for themselves, but in the fight, see the vulnerability and the pain and the suffering if we have the eyes to see it through that lens instead of judging. This is, again, the blessing of Chiron is that we really need to humble ourselves for the sake of humanity for the sake of humanity and be able to see this is our common ground i see myself when you're angry when you're upset when you're hurting i see myself within you i identify with you sometimes there's some people and some populations that have go unheard for so long that the only time when they're really hurt and taken seriously is when they're angry when they're you know breaking things or destructive and that's when attention turns and that's all of a sudden when their, their, their concerns start to really be taken seriously. So it may look destructive, but really what's happening is that that person was internally burning. That person had pain on the inside and finally it's starting to express itself. This could happen in the global. You can also see this in community. You can also see with this within yourself. This is an opportunity, a wonderful opportunity for those of you guys that are looking into healing, psychology, therapy, mental health, and activities that help to prioritize and re restore your mental and emotional well-being to actually take those action steps this week if you haven't already because again although this transit is exact on the 29th the, the truth is is that we've been feeling this already and some of you guys have been feeling this sooner rather than later especially when it comes to my earth and fire signs okay so moving on to the next transit if you guys have any other questions about that by the way just go ahead and let me know down in the comments while you're at it, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Make sure that you are subscribed. If you're not subscribed, turn on those notifications. YouTube itself, the platform, has been really going through it. Some of it has to, a very tiny portion of it has to do with content creators, but for the most part, it's the the masses. If we're looking at uh, Pluto, Pluto's transit through Aquarius right now, ruling social media and social media platforms, social networking, those types of things. Pluto totally destroys, dismantles everything that is that it touches. That includes social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. Any platforms of the future during the Pluto transit through Aquarius, any transits of the past that are still in existence during Pluto transit are going to feel the direct brunt of this transit. I would not want to work for these companies right now. I feel like my job security would just be like, and also the stress of it would just be way, 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 way too much. Also, shout out to small business owners. Right now, you guys have a beautiful beaming light shining on you right now. So if you are someone who is talking or thinking about creating a small business, uh, I hope that you've started taking some steps. I've been high key encouraging my small business, my small businesses and those who are have ideas to seriously to take those ideas seriously because as big business crushes and crumbles especially when Saturn was transiting through Capricorn that was back in the day but also when Pluto was definitely transiting through uh, Capricorn I'm just like this is when small small businesses start to really formulate themselves here so anyway moving on I want to talk to you about Uranus in Taurus. Now this transit has been going on for quite some time, but this the specific part of this transit that I really wanna draw your attention to is how crazy our financial systems are gonna be shifting. They're gonna be breaking down. They're gonna be building up major economic shifts, especially when it comes to monet the value of the dollar, the, the value of monetary things. There's a big truck that's passing by. So hopefully it's not gonna to be too loud. Um, but also stock markets, this is also a wonderful time where Taurus loves, 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 love security and nice things. However, there's an emphasis when Uranus transit into the sign of Taurus where we start to reflect on the value of the things that is that we have. So it's no shock to me that many people, the society collectively started looking into and prioritizing minimalism, getting rid of all of their stuff. I almost said the S-H-I-T word really getting rid of a lot of um, their things and their stuff, um, focusing, drawing their attention away from over, over like over materialism, over, cons over consumption, like constantly buying and needing things. However, make sure that we're not turning the act of minimalism into a whole new consum consuming part of ourselves in society, which how does that happen? But we always wanna keep an eye out on on uh trends trends what what is trending so yes minimalism 
is something that is going to be showcasing. We're going to be experiencing that all of Uranus's transit through Taurus. It's where we try to simplify, but as you're simplifying, it's help. What you should be using this transit for is to understand what is the actual of value to you, not what society says is valuable to you. So make sure that you're looking at what is important to you, how you spend your days, how you want to feel every day, and if the things that you're bringing into your, into your home, into your space, if they're actually serving that purpose or if they're acting as distractions. Okay. Um, the other thing that I want to talk to you about with Uranus, and this is something that I really want you guys to keep your eyes out on, is your mind, your, your focus is going to shift on your budgeting and money and resources, especially because Mercury, the planet of communication, how we analyze information is going to be tr directly conjunct Uranus. That is going to be on the 31st at exact at 1.53 a.m. But again, we are going to be feeling that from the 29th until sunday the 2nd of june can you believe it we are already in june time is flying time is flying but yeah this transit is going to be may 31st at 1 53 a.m but we're already feeling this this effect basically how we can feel this the the side effects of this is it can create jitters it can create a lot of fast thinking if you are someone who is um, what do they say like your cog the way that you think about things is just so different from society I would not be surprised if you have a like a download of ideas and mental activity if you are someone who identifies as ADD or ADHD or if you have children you, you just gotta fucking part of my French embrace the overactivity that this transit is going to be giving us all week. This is just a time to not even try to fight this energies, but get it out. So if I had a child that was born right now, for those of you guys that don't know, I'm pregnant. Um, waiting, waiting, we're almost there. But this is one of those days where if she was old enough, I would take her to the park and I would just, instead of trying to factor in education and learning through quiet activities, this would be the type of transit where I'd be like, we're going to learn on the playground. This is going to be more physical activity. We're going to learn through sports. We're going to learn through engagement. And just making sure that I'm keeping my eye on her because these types of transits can get kids and people in trouble. Not in a bad way, but just like, you know, just little, little tiffs here and there. Another way that we can feel this is just like a feeling of restlessness. Like just, even though this isn't the physical body, that's more the energy of Mars, the mind and the body do connect and Mercury rules the mind. Mars is already agitated as it's transiting through the sign of, um, sorry, as it's transiting over Chiron and through the sign of Aries. There's, if this is showing you right now how much physical activity is needed to kind of like get out your wiggles and get out your agitation and get out your feelings and play and be active, I don't know what is like this is just one of those times where you got to get your wiggles out it's going to be really hard for you to stay focused on one thing it's going to be a million type, types of things that you want to do a min million types of ideas this is also not a transit that you want to over promise especially so don't forget we are in Gemini season the sun is transiting transiting through Gemini Gemini does the best that it can but it doesn't promise a whole lot when it comes to staying focused and staying committed to any one thing it's all over the place it has a whole bunch of interest so keep your eyes open for that let's take a quick break i gotta switch out my battery and i'll be back in 2.5 seconds all right darlings as promised i told you you probably wouldn't even notice that i was gone and now here we are back again the problem is is i can't remember what I was talking about. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, how funny. Gemini, Gemini and the inability to commit <laughs> to an idea uh, to focus. So that right there, we are in Gemini season. So of course we're gonna be the, feeling the influence of that. The hyperactivity is gonna be real this week. So give yourself and others a whole lot of grace if you possibly can with that just give some space for people to get their wiggles out whether it's you or your friends your family your partner or your children speaking of which speaking of hyperactivity we do want to keep our eyes focused on the fact that mercury again transiting through taurus by june 3rd which is starting next week actually is going to be monday that is when Mercury will be, is moving this way into the sign of Gemini. 
that's what we're going to see an even more emphasis on um, overactivity, anxiety for those of you guys that may be vulnerable to it, but also good ideas. This is, again, a wonderful time to bounce around a lot of ideas with, with yourself to make plans for the future, but also keep in mind that the, the rate of energy that you may be feeling from these transits, from these planets, is not something that's going to be forever. It's not going to be permanent. So if you feel a surge of emotion and energy during this week, try not to promise or overpromise yourself this week, making these grand elaborate plans for the future. There's going to be a lot of change and pivots necessary when that energy kind of revisits, like returns back to its base level, your normal, your normal way of processing and thinking. In the future, something else that I really want you guys to keep an eye out for speaking of Gemini, is the fact that we're going to be having the new moon in the sign of Gemini. This is going to be June 6th at 8.38 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Big, big time for ideas, planning, adventuring, hearing interesting news, striking bits of information. Definitely keep an eye on uh, the 31st when Mercury and Uranus are conjunct in the sign of Taurus. I wouldn't be surprised if any type of developments and conversations that happen during those times start to really begin to get the ball ro rolling or you start getting a, 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 a bigger picture of what you want and see for yourself in the future based upon these ideas that were popping off like pop rocks in your mouth. Have you ever had those uh, nostalgic candies? Um, again, around the 31st. There's a major transit and this is the last thing I'm going to talk about and um, then I'm going to go ahead and push off for to pack up the rest of the orders for um, the last shop update. As you guys know, the apothecary is going to be closing down. I mean it this time, I mean it. it I did say that I was gonna close it down and it was left open for a week, but we're gonna seriously, and by we, I mean me, myself, and I, I and I, we're shutting this shop down because I'm gonna be prepping for, well, getting the remainder of the readings and orders out that have are pending right now as well as prepping and planning for a queen bee homestead after that i am 100 percent going on maternity leave 100 <laughs> percent. i'm making a promise to myself and not because of <laughs> these transits right now i'm serious i talked to my partner about it we talked to our family 100 percent. we're going on maternity leave we are shutting the shop down and if anybody sees me doing otherwise you better tell me right away girl remember your maternity leave <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, Jupiter is over here transiting through Gemini, and he is in this beautiful trine with Pluto, who is over here retrograde in the sign of Aquarius. This, to me, feels and looks like a big buoy to our collective, to society right now. It's going to feel like a big healing balm that is going to be transformative. I'm not entirely sure how this energy is going to show up I do feel like it's going to bring interesting information revelations in the in the world of politics and who is for the people like who is it for the people positive changes when it comes to taking care of humanity I don't I'm not this is not a political channel I don't bring my political beliefs here and if and anything if I'm being honest with you which I never bring my political beliefs here it does look a little bleak from where I stand so looking at this transit um, it's hard for me right now to be like oh yeah this is something to be positive about and for but I do trust astrology I do trust the transits and I do trust myself and my study of astrology and I believe that this beautiful trine and the aspects that are happening between Jupiter and Pluto right now are going to be transformative for the greater good however it's gonna be really hard like I said for us or for me to even see it and that's just me being totally transparent with you guys but again I like to leave my political beliefs out out of this for the rest of us this is these downloads these major downloads that we're feeling and sensing in our personal lives that are giving us signs and clues of what's to come however we need to be more open to being flexible and fluid with how these changes in our lives in our careers in our relationships in our health how they're going to be flowing into our reality because they're just very hard to predict right now all we know is that there's massive and major change that's happening within us all we know is that there is some type of pivot 
all we know is that life as we know it or who we are as a person is shifting and evolving in some great way what the outcome is going to look like is going to be different for everyone and this is something that it's so important i know this is so cliche but it's like let go let god like really trust the divine in this process partly because for many of us the vision is bigger than how we see it last time i saw transits like this happening within my within my own life i knew that something major was about to happen i knew that there were some things i needed to let go of i knew that i had a bigger a bigger plan i would go to my altar i would light my candles i would set intention and wait every full moon every new moon i would be patient i would continue to talk to the universe the divine and until one day i got that download that says jess your vision is not nearly as big as mine and that was the divine speaking to me next thing you know what i thought what was going to take me forever to even achieve in my life in the entirety of my life only took me a year and it just snowballed into something way bigger the biggest blessing that i could have ever asked for and that was bahati life in a nutshell now for for every one of you guys it's going to be totally different i would look at without like funnel visioning like constant like tunnel vision not funnel tunnel visioning my vision into this i would look at what gemini rules within your within your needle chart what house it rules and i would look at what pluto is currently transforming within your natal chart now for the sake of an example let's pretend like this is the natal chart this is someone's natal chart and not a chart of the moment for those of you guys that don't know i use horary astrology in order to map and predict my, my predictions for the future for our weekly forecast um jupiter is currently transiting through the ninth house however um, I would keep, even though this is in the ninth house, it's activating the 10th. So this is something that I would say, listen, there's got to be some type of mental and spiritual expansion that's happening within you that's going to impact in a great way your career the MC, because of your MC line that rules your gift and your work, your service to um, others, you know, your reputation. It's gonna come through ideas, it's gonna come through things that you're processing, your dreams, it's gonna be pretty vivid. You may have more than one idea. You may have more than one vision. You may have more than one thing that you feel yourself called into. Give yourself the space to explore and to expand yourself within that. What's being deeply transformed right now is your hobbies, your personal interests, what brings you joy and what you create, why? Because Pluto is transiting through the fifth house of creation, children, and sensuality. Um, and then also it's activating your sixth house of your hygiene, how you take care of yourself every single day, and also your service, your work to others. So if I was to make a prediction, I would say, well, this has a lot to do with what I do, what I create, and what I deem value, and how I end up giving that to the world. My reputation on how I end up giving that to the world. However, I wouldn't pinpoint and tunnel vision myself and to be like, okay, this is the only way that I'm gonna show up. We wanna see the general picture, but we wanna allow the universe to take us in this cosmic wave, this cosmic flow on this river of life to the destination that is that we will inevitably find ourselves. If you want to insert yourself in the co-creation process of this, I am someone who is a big supporter of that. As you guys know, I'm really big on setting intention, manifestation, magic. That is something that is deep, deep, deep within my bones, passed on to me from generation to generation, the generations before, and I'll pass it on to my own daughter. So I'm really big on setting intention and petitioning and talking to the universe and saying, hey, this is what I'm thinking, but I'm also open to your ideas. I'm also open to co-creating. If you are someone who likes to let go, let God, and put it up into the realms of the universe, your angels and your guides, I would just ask for discernment, protection, and blessing and the ability to show up with the strength the conviction to follow through with orders and to know that it is the voice of god the divine who's speaking to me or the voices of my ancestors who are who are leading me and inspiring me into the next steps of my future so for that you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me i do have to go and pack these orders my aunt is going to be here any minute now i'm sending you guys all of my love do again give this video a thumbs up Make sure that you're following me on TikTok and Instagram and definitely here on YouTube because I'm constantly pushing out videos every week. Even though I am going on maternity maternity blah, maternity leave in the months to come, I still most likely will be showing up 
on the YouTube channel and definitely for Bahati Love Notes because you don't even realize how much shuffling and pulling cards for Bahati Love Notes group has been a wonderful part of my daily, daily routine that I just live for and I'm not... I'm not even trying to stop doing that right now. Thank you guys to the those of you who are brand new and just subscribed recently. Some of you guys are surprised and stunned. I've seen the comments and I've seen the emails just being like, holy shit, Jess, I didn't know that that, that we were going to go so deep. I didn't know that I needed that. I, it's just different. It's always different than what it is that you would expect it, but that's just how the divine angels and real magic works. It's never really what it is that you can expect. There's a lot of things that you have come to expect on the internet when it comes to tarot and intuition and astrology. Bahati life, myself, tend to be like not typical. So it's definitely something that's worth exploring. I'll link it down below. Until then, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thank you to the sponsor of today's video. And of course, I will see you guys in my next one. I'll talk to you later. Bye.